But that belief, you do create the miracles. The miracles of spontaneous remission, for example, a person terminally ill who all of a sudden says, I'm not buying this. I'm going to change my vision of life. And the moment they change their perception, they have what's called a spontaneous remission. Again, that would be called a miracle, but what was it? Taking full control of consciousness and manifesting a life of being fully conscious and present and, and seeing what brings harmony into your life and avoiding or eliminating as best you can any of the disharmony that exists on the outside because disharmony will make disharmony inside. Yeah, what, 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 how I'm hearing this is the subconscious you talked about early is often unconscious. Yes. And by what you're talking about, the subconscious, the unconscious becomes conscious. Yeah. And through that, change can happen. Where, where the consciousness can go back and review it because the consciousness is the one that has a perspective. And, and, you, and you become your subconscious. So it's very interesting because what I talk about is, look, uh, people healed themselves innately for a million years before there were medical schools, okay? Uh, because we are innately able to heal ourselves. You cut yourself, you don't really need a doctor to heal the cut. The cut heals by itself, uh, and all the illnesses can. But then I say, but the subconscious, which was programmed the first six years, go back to the six years. And I would say, in a conventional family, that when a child got sick in the family, or any member of the family got sick, the conventional phrase they heard was, oh, we have to take Billy to the doctor. Mom has to go to the doctor. What did we learn? That's a program that says, if I am sick, it didn't say heal yourself. That wasn't the lesson. The lesson was, when I am sick, I have to go see this doctor. And, and here's the joke, which I like about it, because you ask a lot of people that get sick and go to the doctor and ask them, they say, you know, it was really funny. I got well on the way to the doctor, or I got well waiting in the doctor's office. And I go, you know, that, that's funny, but it's not a joke for this reason. You were always able to heal yourself until you got a program. What was the program? Go to the doctor. So basically, and which I love about it, because nobody said what the doctor had to do. You just had to go to the doctor. <laughs> so the point was, these people are sick, but they got a program that says, well, I'm sick, but I can't heal myself. Why? Because I didn't go to the doctor. So they make a commitment, they go to the doctor, and on the way to going to the doctor, in the doctor's presence, they completed the commitment because it never said the doctor had to do anything, just had to go. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, all of a sudden, the innate ability to heal themselves start working, and then they find themselves in the doctor's waiting room feeling, God, I feel a lot better than I did when I got here. And the answer was, because you made a program of limitation, then you succeeded by following the program, I'm showing up. And, and, and that's all you had to do, because all you had to do is go see the doctor. You talk about, again in, in your first book, about how cells automatically move away from toxicity and towards nutrition. Yes. And it seems that as human beings, that's something that we're trying to do, but we get it wrong a lot of the time. We're trying to move away from un unhappiness, or what we think makes us yeah. unhappy, and towards what we think makes us happy, but we get it muddled up, don't we? Well, yeah, but the, you see, the key word you said is what we think makes us that's happy. That's right. So, yeah. I mean, I was caught in that in the old days, too. Before I became aware, I thought at one point, wow, I'm going to buy that little, you know, that car. I bought a car that looked like a Ferrari called the Pantera back in the 70s. And I thought, okay, I'm going to be happy. I, I got this great car. So I got the car, and about like three days later, it's like, now I got this car. I'm not any happier. And a matter of fact, I got now three speeding tickets because every day I took the car out. Uh, of course, I couldn't go 30 miles an hour with it. So uh, <laughs> every day, it was like the car became a burden to me. And it was all of a sudden, I said, well, you know, that whole program that that Ferrari is going to make you happy, that, that was a misprogram. It wasn't the car that makes you happy. Uh, and I started to find out it wasn't the material things that make you happy. What makes you happy? Love makes you happy. Good food will make you happy. Harmony in your environment makes you happy. These things are, uh, the harmony in the environment, where's the price tag on that one, you know? Uh, basically, having a relationship with somebody that supports you and fulfills you, where's the price tag? It, it, we always bought that, oh, money gives you happiness. So we had all, all those billions of people out there every day running in the streets. How much money can I make? Because if I get enough money, I'm going to be happy. And then you find out even people with the most money are not happy. And it's, it, it was programming was wrong. If we were programmed to seek out companionship and community and love, that's where you make us happy. Change the whole game. But it's almost as if we have to go through a process of finding certain things don't work to find out what does work for us. Well, that, that's true, but then the question is this. How many people go through the process, find it doesn't work, and then repeat the process and it doesn't work again? It's well, like, oh, oh yeah, I've been married four times, somebody was saying. It's like, 
God, they repeated the same error yeah. already three times with the ideas. Do you think by the fourth time maybe you could learn that whatever pattern you played three times in a row will probably play itself again until you change, not your partner? <laughs> you keep bringing in the same partner with different colored hair and a different name, but you're still, you brought that person in and you play the same game over again. The question is, can you learn? The answer is you can, but do many people learn? The answer is no, because they keep thinking that it's just my fate, you know, that's just the way life is. But their subconscious me. still remains unconscious. That's the that's problem. The key, Until it? you change the subconscious yeah. program, you, it's, it, the subconscious is a habitual mind. It's a habit. Yeah. Until you change the habit, you will be, replay the habit. That's why it's called a habit. So you keep replaying the same program. It's all, yeah, you keep, uh, you know, it's like the definition of insanity is the idea of keep doing the same thing and expect something different to happen. The fact is, no, <laughs> that's insane. Why well, you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same thing. And if the habit mind is giving us a story, then the answer says, well, how do I change it? And the answer is change the subconscious mind. Because that's where the habits are that we got from other people. Again, this is most important. The fundamental habits in the subconscious mind came from other people. And that's why they rarely match what you want in your conscious mind, which is you. And you create those programs, and yet the fundamental programs of the subconscious were downloaded during that first six years of our development. At the beginning of the book, you have a dedication, which I really like, which I wrote out. You dedicate it to Gaia, the mother of us all. May she forgive us our trespass. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in that, uh, in that quote. <laughs> well, it, it, uh, when I finally started to realize a very simple truth, and it was like an old spiritual word, but I now understand the biological connotation of it, that we were made in the image of the environment. And that, so we are complements to the environment. And yet what we have done is without being aware that our biology is dependent on the environment, that we have systematically undermined, destroyed Mother Nature and Gaia. And in the process, now we're finding we're, we are threatened with our own extinction. And the fact is, well, we didn't know what we were doing. But the question is, uh, uh, will Gaia allow us to come back? And the answer is absolutely. Because just as much as a person can come back from the edge of death with something called the spontaneous remission. Even though science has already recognized we are facing our extinction, so we could say that we're a terminal patient, <laughs> humanity is a terminal patient, um, the concept of changing our belief system will allow the garden to come right back to fullness again. So we are in a learning stage to remove ourselves from the beliefs of our current civilization which undermine not just the humans but the environment that that we're in uh, and the problem is we were created as a complement to a certain environment since we destroying or are destroying that environment then we are no longer complements to an environment then we don't fit by definition and that is why the scientists recognize we are facing our extinction so um, I like to apologize to nature <laughs> saying, geez, I'm really sorry, we didn't get it, but we're learning. And more and more people, especially the younger people, very importantly, are recognizing you cannot destroy this environment and survive, and that we must pull together and honor Gaia, the mother of us all, because by returning our love back to Gaia, Gaia will give us back the love and the life that we, that we can have on this planet. Absolutely. Something you look at in Spontaneous Evolution too is how science and spirituality are coming together. They used to be very separate. They used oh, to absolutely. Be this, the, this, the scientific world, which is very factual driven, and that's that, and you couldn't change it. And spirituality was trying to open up things, but they really are meeting now, aren't they? Yeah, it was interesting because um, the spiritual world of religion was talking about the invisible moving forces that shape the physical reality, and we call them spirit. And then science uh, only came into existence because it, it made a detente with the church. In the very early days of science, it said, look, we won't tread on your invisible spiritual domain. We will just study the physical world. And when Newton was able to predict the movements of the planet by just looking at the physical features, then scientists got the idea as well. If you can understand how the universe operates by just studying the material world, we don't need that invisible stuff. But in 1925, Newtonian physics was uh, incorporated, subsumed by a bigger physics called quantum physics. And quantum physics emphasizes the universe is made out of energy, it's not made out of matter. And then I say, well, what does the quantum physicists call this energy that the universe is made out of? And I say, well, they call it the field. I say, what's the definition of the field? I love this. 
invisible moving forces that influence the physical world. I go, my goodness, that's the same definition as spiritual that's used for spirit. I go, yes, quantum physics emphasizing the invisible uh, field as primary to the physical world is essentially reiterating the statement of the spiritual people who talked about the invisible forces shaping our physical existence and so by definition science the new science of quantum physics is bringing us back into alignment with the spiritual reality uh, hopefully uh, the the dogmatic beliefs of the church which had uh, talked about these wonderful terms but didn't allow us to live there and science which is still stuck in its material plane will both divest themselves of their dogma and allow us to come together and recognize that we're all part of that invisible field that that we don't even live in our own bodies if you understand the nature of how the cell works that we are part of the field being downloaded into our body that we're all by definition the field or we're all spiritual same definition and and if we recognize this the unity of it and that you cannot be taken out of the field and you cannot be in a sense punished by the field you are the field then maybe the beliefs, those very restrictive beliefs from both science and from the dogmatic religion uh, will disappear because the people owning their own spirituality, owning their own responsibility and not saying, oh, it's spirits that did this or things, other factors, that we are the creators, will generate a new world because what I firmly believe is very simple. Go out and talk to the average person anywhere in the world and say, if you could create a world, what would you like? Well, I'd like a world where there's peace and harmony and I like some food and a job. And I go, isn't it amazing how everywhere you go in the world, virtually the entire population has the same belief? And I go, then how come we don't have any answers? Because the leadership isn't exercising that belief. So I trust the people to take over the leadership of this world and that the structure that is is actually in a state of collapse. When it collapses, this will be our opportunity to evolve from the very destructive Darwinian perception of a world into a more holistic holism that says we're all part of the same system, we're all cells in the same body, and when we work together, we will create magic on this earth like nothing has ever been seen before. So I'm very optimistic about that. I think that's a great place to finish, Bruce. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. I so appreciate this opportunity. And I just want to do a little uh, plug here for uh, Bruce's two books, Belief of Biology, Biology of Belief, rather, and uh, Spontaneous Evolution, which I had as a talking book, which I really enjoy listening to in the car. So thank you, Bruce Lipton, and thank you for watching Conscious TV. Hope we see you again soon. Goodbye.